So here's the big question. How are entrepreneurs like us, who have been hustling and struggling to make it to success, who seem to make it one step forward, only to fall two steps back, who are dedicated, determined, and driven, how do we finally break through and win? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brian Kelly, and this is the Mind Body Business Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. Woo, we have got a stellar show lined up for you tonight, and I cannot wait to introduce you to this an amazing young man by the name of Blaine Elkers. He is a really great guy. I can tell we've gotten to know each other a little bit just before the show. Family man. He's got uh, he's got kids. He's he's uh, he's a wonderful guy, and he's also very successful. And that's why he's on this show is to help you to take your business to that next level. Truly, that is what this show is about. It is about what I call the three pillars of success. And they are the very name of this show, the components. Mind being mindset. So I studied nothing but very successful people for a, a period of about a decade through mentors of mine who I worked with personally, through authors of books, some of whom I've met, some I've not. Others who may not be with us anymore, who are, have long been passed before I even knew of them. And what I learned in this walk, in this journey, was that to a person, they had these three qualities. And I started off with mind being mindset. What is that? It is to a person, these individuals had not only a very powerful and positive, but even most, more importantly, flexible mindset. And then body. To a person, they each took care of themselves, both physically and nutritionally. Literally, that's all what body is about. And then business. Business is very multi multifaceted because one must master an array of skill sets in order to become successful in any business and then to scale it beyond where you are now. And the beautiful thing is because there are many skill sets. There are skill sets like marketing, sales, team building, systematizing, leadership. I, I could go on for quite some time. And to master any one thing, being an astute listener and viewer of this show, you know that can take a very long time. The good news is you don't have to master every single skill set that's required. If you just mastered one of those skill sets that I just mentioned, it was one of those four or five that I just rattled off, then you can skip the line, so to speak, and get your business on track much quicker than by trying to master every one of these skill sets individually. And that one skill set, if you master it, that will give you that skip the line <laughs> attribute is the skill set of, are you ready? Leadership, yes. And even if you don't have a team right now, leading yourself, get in the habit of leading yourself in very profound ways. Read books about it. We'll be talking about that in just a moment as well and learn how to become the best leader you can be. And once you've be, uh, really dialed in the leadership skills, you can then bring on those individuals that have mastered the skill sets that you have yet to or may never master yourself. So that's the good news. It's really good news. So you concentrate on leadership and developing that skill set, and then you can really take your business to the next level much faster than if you were to do it all on your own. And that's what this show truly is all about. It's about modeling successful people like Blaine, who's coming on here in just a moment, I promise. And another fantastic attribute I learned uh, about very successful people is that to a person, they are also very avid readers of books. And with that, I'd like to segue real quickly into a small segment I affectionately call Bookmarks. Bookmarks. Born to read. Bookmarks. Ready. Steady. Read. Bookmarks. Brought to you by ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. Yeah, there you see it. ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. In a real quick, what I call soapbox moment for all of you, I have a little bit of advice. And that is, you're going to be presented with several resources during this show. This is the first. Reach Your Peak Library. Dot com. What I would implore upon you to do is instead of clicking away and going and checking it out on another tab or a different computer or another device, instead, 
get out that old fashioned pen and pencil or put it on your notepad on your tablet or computer and write them down and wait until the show is over, then go back to your notes and then visit them all individually after the show is over. Why do I say that? I've spoken on stage for years. I've, I was a lead trainer for one seminar industry. I created my own seminar uh, company as well. And what I've learned was, you know, when you're on stage, you know when you're getting to the good part. You know when the, that transformational message is about to go out. And then you see someone get up from the audience and walk out the door because they had to go to the restroom or they had that all important text or phone call that came in. Well, they just missed out on what could have changed their life forever. And I knew it. And it just it it just irked me. I didn't like that because for them, they missed out. And for you, I would hate for you to miss out because your focus is taken off somewhere else. That's all that's about. So just do yourself a favor, not just for this show, but for future shows, for seminars, for everything. Take notes, take avid notes, stay focused, stay what I say in the room, because I'm telling you, Blaine Akers is going to be giving a ton of information to you or Elkers, sorry, Blaine Elkers is going to be giving you a ton of information uh, that you can use to change your life. Le these people with German last names, they are fun. I love it. <laughs> and he's a lot of fun too. And I cannot wait to bring him on, but reachyourpeaklibrary.com real quick is literally a website that I had my team assemble with you in mind. Why do I say that? That sounds kind of cheesy, doesn't it? It's not cheesy at all because I myself did not become an avid reader of books until the age of 47. That was 11 years ago. Yep, you've all done the math by now. And the beautiful thing is I found out, wow, what an impactful thing reading the right books has on both my business life and sometimes even my personal life and even sometimes in both. And so I began noting the books that really had that kind of impact in my life. And for every book I read that met that criteria, they ended up on this website. So not every book I've ever read is in here, but at least you can go into this one resource and pick that one book that just jumps off the page to you with the description, maybe the, maybe the title, maybe the cover, whatever it is, at least it's been vetted by one more successful entrepreneur that Otherwise, you might just be throwing darts at a dartboard, hoping and praying for that bullseye. Uh, it just increases your your likelihood of getting a lot out of it rather than just hoping that you pick the right book. Not promising it will give you the same impact it did with me, but at least the odds are increased. And by the way, this is not a website for the purpose of making money. Uh, yes, those are affiliate links on those buttons. That I don't I don't mind if you go anywhere else that you want to go to get your books, if you get them somewhere else please, by all means, go ahead, find the title, go get them wherever you like to get your books. It doesn't matter as long as you get it and then read it and then watch your life begin to change in ways you never would have otherwise realized if you haven't been an avid reader of books already. Those of you that are avid readers, I'm sure you'll find a title in there you haven't read yet. Go ahead and grab it from there as well. That's enough about Reach Your Peak Library. Guess what? It's time to bring on the man of the hour, it is time for our guest expert. Let's bring him on. Here he comes. Get ready. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it <laughs> is the one, the only, Blaine Elkers. <laughs> Hey, Brian, thank you so much for having me on. And look, you're my new best friend. You said young man. You called me a young man. That is that is a man after my own heart. So uh, I appreciate that. And I will say that, you know, I, I like your podcast. I've been listening for a while and um, you have the servant's heart. So I really want to acknowledge that, that, uh, that you're here to serve. And I'm, I'm sure tonight we are going to have fun, but we're also going to serve the listeners as well. So I'm excited about that. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to share and serve any way I can tonight. Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our show. Thanks for coming on. I am so kidding. That was awesome. You have a better intro than I do, Blaine. That was fantastic. <laughs> So a little bit of housekeeping, and then we're going to dive in. Uh, so hang with us. Stick with us. Just got to take care of our sponsors. And one of those is the Big Insider Secrets. Uh, you see the red and white stamp-looking logo that Blaine is pointing to right now. If you're watching live on video, fantastic. And by the way, if you're not, then head to themindbodybusinessshow.com. Themindbodybusinessshow.com. Don't do that now. Write it down. 
and then register so you will get notified when we go live next time because those who are watching live can enter to win a five night stay at a five star luxury resort again compliments of the big insider secrets and you, you, i'm telling you you do not want to miss that and for those of you on now stay to the end you do not want to miss that it's a bona fide amazing vacation stay couple more and then we're going to get moving with the man the myth the legend mr acres himself so if you're struggling with putting a live show together and it's overwhelming and you want a lot of the processes done for you while still enabling you to put on a high quality show and connect with great people like blaine elkers and grow your business all at the same time then write this down carpetbombmarketing.com then head on over to it after the conclusion of tonight's show carpet bomb marketing saturate the marketplace with your message and you can get a free lifetime membership to the reach your peak club your free membership it includes instant access to deep discounts on major software services and top shelf training courses you need to run your successful business so think of it as your entrepreneur discount house catapult your business to the next level and sign up for free now not this second write it down and get a hotel discount card check this out worth 200 just for joining there's no cost not to join no monthly fee it is free completely free and then after that go ahead and grab your deep discounts from within the club so write this down and then after the show head on over to reachyourpeakclub.com reachyourpeakclub.com all right let's bring on the man of the hour, Mr. Blaine Elkers. All right. So what I love to do, Blaine, is start every show with literally the topic of, I can't even figure it out. The first word in the show's title is mind. Well, it's technically the second word, but I love to dig in and I want to find out for not just for myself, but for everyone watching and listening that what is it for you? You're a successful individual. You've got a family, which is success all by itself. You've you've raised kids and they are, um, I'm guessing, doing very well. And <laughs> yes, given that you're their dad, I mean, that the odds are pretty good. Just in a little time I've known you, you're also very servant based as well. And just a heart of gold. I can just see it oozing. What I love to do is really find out because I think the core and the the foundation of one success or lack thereof is literally what's going on in between your two ears of that individual. So for you, what I want to find out is when you get up in the morning and you know what's ahead of you, being an entrepreneur, it's all, you know, smooth and easy sailing every day, isn't it? No, it's not. It's, it's <laughs> nothing, anything, but it can be quite the ride if you know what I mean. So for you, what is going on in that big, beautiful brain of yours when you get up that keeps you driven, keeps you motivated, keeps you going forward to continue to crush it day in and day out? Yeah, great, great question. And I do think our lives are kind of built around days. Uh, you know, this this time, you know, you know, one a, a single day, right? You know, if you can win the day, then you can win the week, you can win the month, you can win the year. And so for me, th there's two things. One is actually, uh, and most of the listeners probably know this, they may not be doing it well enough, but it starts the day before. So I do, I, I have this thing called mm. NDP, next day planning. And I really, I, I don't want to let a day end without planning the next one. So for me, before I go to bed or, or even sometimes maybe around dinner time, I like to plan out the next day so that when I wake up, I kind of know where, what time I need to wake up, what I'm going to be doing, and have a have a plan for the day. Now, now if you're if you're not a planner, uh, you should at least lay out like top couple of things you want to do for the day. And if you don't, I often tell people it's like getting on an airplane. So you go down the tarmac, you get in the airplane, you look over the cockpit, and there's no pilot in there. So you sit down, and then the flight attendant comes by and you say, "Excuse me, um, where's the pilot?" And she says, uh, "There is no pilot. There's no pilot today." We're not going anyplace. How, how long are you going to sit in that plane? Hopefully not very long. But that's what you're doing when you wake up in the morning without a plan. I say, don't get on that flight. Um, but anyway, to keep my sanity on a daily basis, the one thing that, that's really helped me a lot is that I know most people, not everybody, but most people take a shower every day uh, and they wash their physical body. Uh, what I do in the morning is I take something called a mind shower. So every morning, and I have a I have an app that tracks it. So I, I'm around 
I don't know, maybe like 12, 1300 days in a row of taking a mind shower. Uh, first thing in the morning. Now, I, I like a 10 minute mind shower, but if I only have three minutes, I'm still going to get my mind shower in. And there's a bunch of different apps you can use, but basically, it's to wash your mind out, uh, you know, of all the kind of the garbage and the trash and the head trash, you know, from the previous day and maybe even fr from that morning. Uh, and, and that really allows me to kind of set the intention for the day and to get a clear, uh, I, I call it the lens of the future, but get a clear lens for, for, for what I want to happen that day. Because a lot of, a lot of um, how you think about things kind of cause them to appear to you in, in one way or another. So, so anyway, the Mind Shower is my favorite. You can use uh, Headspace is one app I use. Calm is another app. Uh, Abide is, is kind of a Christian version of a meditation app. And then Insight Timer, uh, and all those apps have free versions. Insight Timer has like 100,000 different uh, kind of uh, meditations and different things you can do. But anyway, that's my biggest thing is 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 the mind shower in the morning. What's your go-to app of those you mentioned? For, for the mind showers, um, I've been using Headspace. Okay. So, um, and, and there's like a paid version, maybe it's like 70 bucks a year or something like that. But what I like about it is also tracks everything. It also, if you want to go deeper, like learn about mindfulness or different types of meditation, you know, um, and then you can have accountability buddies in there. So I, I it has some pretty cool features. That's the one I and, use the most. You know, and anybody that just heard, oh, it's 70 bucks a year for an app. That's, that's can sound like a lot of money, but $70 is nothing compared to what the results Blaine is getting. And so if Blaine's getting those results, that means they're repeatable, which means you can get them too. And so 70 is nothing for an investment in your future and getting into a good habit. Uh, do you yeah. include affirmations and things like that, or is it kind of pre-written for you? How does that work? Uh, so in, inside there, there uh, is a lot of, you know, there, there's probably thousands of different types of meditation subjects. So you can, you could figure out like what you like the best. Like I like a one person, certain voice and, and it's, and uh, you know, and, and this one, the one that I, I use the most now, I, I, I also like variety. So, so I don't like to maybe necessarily do the same exact one every day, but the one that I've done the most is a breathing one where her, hmm. where uh, this gentleman walks you through actually the owner of the company headspace. He's got a really calming voice and he walks you through some breathing exercises. So hmm. I really, that's, that's probably my, my, my favorite one. Um, I do like affirmations, you know, kind of like positive statements. So my wife and I, we, we, um, we do this a journaling exercise each day. And, and part of that is where you write some, I am statements, right? I am healthy. Uh, you know, I am full of unconditional love. Like that was, that's the recent one I'm working on. Uh, my, my wife has me working on one that says I am a, a an agreeing person. Uh, so, <laughs> so sometimes as an entrepreneur, I like to take control of the conversation and, yeah. and like whatever someone says, for some reason, I'm like kind of wired just to come at it the other way. But I, I've been working on that, shifting that over time. Uh, but but I do, I, I like affirmations. And then I like affirmations, which uh, is similar to affirmations, but it's more of a, uh, you put put in the form of a question. So instead of, uh, you, you could say, uh, you know, I am healthy or, or, or I am full of unconditional love. Or you can say, why do I find it so easy to be unconditionally loving, right? So you put in the form of that question and then your mind starts to answer that. Well, because you do this, because you do that. And it kind of gives you some action steps. So this guy, Noah St. John, he's, he, uh, he kind of came up with that. And, and I, I use those as well. So I just want to point out, well, first, I want to give Mary a shout out. She's a planner. I know, Mary, you have a different last name, Mary. That's awesome. Congrats on that. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> she's an amazing young woman who's actually been to one of my uh, online or one of my seminars that I spoke nice. at as well. So she's amazing and, and Hello, always Mary. Yes, exactly. Just show up, I always say. And she did. Always did. She did a fantastic thing. Um, I love that you start every day with some kind of routine and and you not only start every day but you end every evening or near that with a plan i've i have interviewed so many successful people and nearly to a person they all have either one or the other in the beginning of the day or the end of the day most of the time in the beginning some not many have two like you do and then here's a question i often ask myself and I know others are asking it because there'd be more people that did it otherwise. How much time does it take to go through both of the ones you just described? You described going through Headspace. You described doing journaling 
And you also describe planning for the, the day ahead. How long does all that cumulatively take in one, you know, for that day? Yeah. So, you know, if you look at, um, you know, like I have a morning routine, right? So that morning routine is probably 30 minutes, um, you, you know, so it's, but, but, but if I, uh, if I wake up late or I'm strapped for time, I probably can do that morning routine in eight minutes. So, so again, like, you know, like I like a 10 minute mind shower, but if I need a three minute mind shower, I'm just going to do that. And, and part of the psychology behind that is I, I like to say, win early, win often. And I, I would rather you, I call it nano size, your, your commitment to yourself and still keep the commitment uh, rather than miss a day, right? So, mm. so, so with the mind shower, now the app is tracking. Now, psychologically, once you get past like three or four days in a row, you don't want to break the chain, right? So you want to keep it going, right? So now I'm at, you know, maybe 1,275 days in a row. I really don't want to break that chain. Uh, you know, so there's some power. There's some power in that. But, but that really works because it's the progress that kind of keeps you motivated. And there's some kind of, there, there's dips in motivation or, or the, the world hits you in the face with a big problem, right? Uh, and that's when you got to dial the resistance way down and dial the size of the goal way down. So even people on exercise programs, you know, they'll say, Blaine, I want to exercise 30 minutes a day. And, and I said, that's great. Uh, but let's just make sure you exercise every day, no matter what. So even if, if you're about to get into the shower, you know, do give drop and give me five push-ups or or do some jumping jacks or some high knees or whatever, just to get the heart rate going so that you keep that streak alive. Uh, you know, and and I, I say you kind of win the battle of the brain chemicals because once you once you say, oh, I missed a day. Well, now, oh, now it all just kind of caves in on you, right? Whereas if you just make it really small, so the resistance. You know, you got to dial the resistance down. You might have to dial it down to 30 seconds of exercise, but you probably have 30 seconds. So dial it down to where you can actually still do the thing. Uh, and that kind of keeps you motivated and ke keeps you going. That's brilliant because it, it just keeps the momentum going forward. And you're so right. Once you once you've broken that trend, it's like hard to get back on the wheels like, oh, I've already failed. And we kick ourselves in the butt, <laughs> right. you know, relentlessly. And I got to tell you that right there is it. What you just said is a bomb dropping moment, if anything was. Oh, wow. I got oh, my yeah. first carpet bomb drop. I love yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Smart bombs, bombs of wisdom. And this is what I love. I love about opening the show with mindset uh, topics because, honestly, everyone watching, everyone listening, it is by far the most important topic for successful business and successful life, bar none. And I did not know this until back when I started reading around age 47. And that's when I met my mentor who taught me all about mindset, NLP techniques, uh, all kinds of wonderful things. And I felt I just I, I could not wait for the next day of my life. And I'm that way every day now. It was like I'm a Christian, but it was like a human rebirth, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But it was uh, it was a it was a reset button that I so desperately needed and didn't even know existed. And oh, my gosh. If people realize that everything where you're at right now is 100% attributable, not to any outside forces, not to anyone else, not to any circumstance, it is everything is what's going on in your own noggin. We are all at 100% cause of where we are right now. And I know for some of you, you're going, that just pissed you off, I'm sure. And that... <laughs> Yes, yeah, but it's so true. I mean, yeah. it's so true. And, and my, uh, I know we'll probably end up talking about mentors, but my, my mentor was a guy named Jim Rohn, who you, you might've heard of, <laughs> uh, you know, Jim Rohn. And, and he said, it's not what happens that determines your life future. It's what you do about what yes. happens. And when he said that, I, I hosted him at an event and I was, you know, kind of in the wings there and he was talking and that really you know changed my life because i realized that circumstances yeah i can't control that i can't control what's going to happen but i can control my response or my reaction uh, you know or what i do about what happens and so my worry really subsided there and uh and and, and it's really helped me help me out anyway so so it is you're, you're 100 true that the mindset uh is key uh, i heard this other great quote uh, it was uh, when you argue for your limitations you get to keep them I think it was Gary Keller that said that. But the weird thing is, is when you hear that quote, when you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. I started hearing myself arguing for my for, for limitations in my own life. And then I started hearing all the other people. I'm to this. I'm to that. I can't mm. this. I can't that. I'm like, 
well, if you, there's no way you're even going to get there. You're not even opening the door, right? Yeah. Heard, the door's already shut and locked to your mind, right? So, so anyway, staying open-minded, staying with the, uh, they call the growth mindset, uh, you know, open to the possibilities. And like with the neuro-linguistic programming, you know, programming your mind to be receptive uh, and to be open and to see that stuff. Because unfortunately, you're probably wired the other way, you're, you know, through news media and social media and, and, you know, I don't know, maybe eight out of 10 things you hear are negative, you know, especially in the news and whatnot. So it's, um, it can be a battle to, to switch that around, but, but you definitely can. And when you do, life is a lot different. Yeah. So many, gosh, that was like five bomb drops, but I don't want to, I don't want to rule the show with a bunch of bomb drops the whole time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, although you are so well deserving of them all yeah i my mentor his name's mel cutler he's actually could be my son by age he literally could be my child he's 18 years my junior wow. then, you know what for me age uh race gender religious beliefs none of that ever matters to me in in my judgment of another individual it's their value system is it in uh, alignment with mine and if it's not, doesn't mean we have to be enemies. It's just maybe I won't spend as much time with them. But with this gentleman, Mel, it was like, I love this guy. And uh, he would say from stage, and I don't know if he coined this exactly, but he would say something to the effect of you can either, either let your circumstances control your attitude or you can let your attitude dictate your circumstances. And what I love about that is so deep because we are emotional beings. We are made that way. Thankfully, we are unique because of our emotions. You know, not all of them are good. There are some bad. And the cool thing is you're allowed to react if you have something bad happen to you. You're, you're allowed by design to get angry. You're, you're allowed. It's okay. You're not only allowed, you're programmed to. The cool thing is, though, after that happens and that outburst is done, whatever your form of outburst is, it might be quiet. It might be out, out loud, whatever. It might be physical. might just be internal. We have, every one of us, the choice of how quickly to overcome that emotion, how quickly to decide to go a different direction, how quickly to choose the positive path and find it. That is the beautiful thing that I learned that I didn't realize was even an, an option. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so, I mean, from the first day I met my mentor, he was up on stage. I was in the audience back then. I ended up becoming his lead trainer for two years after a few wow. years of being with him. But this was that first day. And he taught me about being at cause and that changed my life forever from that moment. And it was so, so profound. So that's why I'm spending extra time on this one, Blaine, because it is that important, in my opinion, for everyone to really harness and take into themselves and integrate the fact that mindset is the key to your success or lack thereof. And I dare I say, even your happiness. What would you yeah. say? To yeah, I, I agree. I agree 100%. And, and, and some of those things our mentors say, it's like a seminar in just one sentence, like a whole <laughs> seminar put into this one, you know, sentence that that really changes you. But but yeah, I mean, I, I have this saying called white table, what you think about, you bring about and, and the mind is so powerful. Uh, you, you know, that's one of the things when I was when I was raising my kids, they're, they're out of the nest now, but my wife and I, we really tried to teach them the power of the mind was so yes. so big um you know and it's so underutilized uh you know and so so yeah i think it's important there and some people need some help i mean sometimes you know life can hit you pretty hard you know and so you got to have some tools I, I call it hacking the head trash but if your mind isn't always positive you know then you, you have to kind of start where you're at and begin to kind of rewire it so there's a lot of cool brain science even just the last let's say three years they can measure in your brain when thoughts start what are good thoughts what are bad thoughts and and now they used to think we we had sixty thousand thoughts a day but they just proved two years ago great study came out and it's about six thousand it's still huge six thousand thoughts a day but most are negative most are negative and and being able to rewire the brain. Um, the, the other cool thing they've recently found is is that the brain is very plastic and malleable and can change and grow. Uh, I, I love some great studies that that came out. Like like when I was a kid growing up in high school and college, they thought the brain like when you got to a certain age, like you know adulthood, like eighteen or twenty, your brain stopped growing. You couldn't grow any more brain cells. At least that's what they told me to not drink in college. But but in any case, <laughs> they said that your brain couldn't grow. 
And this great study came out about, um, have you ever been in London with the black taxi cabs? It's like a special yeah. uh, London taxi cab, the black cab. And, and in order to be able to drive that, you have to pass this test. People, uh, one, only one out of five people pass the test. So people take it over and over and over. And they have to learn all the different landmarks. And London is, is laid out. Not like a grid, like Phoenix, we're all like avenues and streets. It's so easy to get everywhere. London is not like that. It's just a big mishmash. Um, but what's interesting is they were able to measure the hippocampus of the taxi drivers, uh, and they were orders of magnitude larger than the average people in the population. And the longer they were a driver, the bigger it was, which is that's this part of the brain that's responsible for maps and navigation. So it kind of proved that the brain, it was like a breakthrough thing that the brain can grow. And, and so just know, listener, wherever you're at, your brain can grow. And, and it's as simple as some people talk about uh, each morning or each evening, think about three things you're grateful for which is good. That That's helpful. But what's even better for your brain is think about three, look back over the last 24 hours and think about three good things that happened to you in the last 24 hours. And what happens is when you do that, when you, when you think about those three things for the last 24 hours, your brain starts to wire in looking for the good in the future, like the opportunity for the good. Plus, first, you'll get rewarded with some good brain chemicals in thinking about those, those three good things that happened in the last 24 hours. But over time, um, and, and literally, it, it begins to wire in about 21 days, but it takes 63 days to actually wire in a new habit. Um, but but anyway, that will will dramatically help to switch it because I know not everybody has the, the great attitude 100% of the time, right? Um, so, and we could do a deep dive into habits as well. But anyway, sorry, I just kind of went on a soapbox there for a moment. I love it. I love it. Soapbox away all day. Uh, you know, and for those of you watching, uh, because now I'm seeing what Blaine is capable of, we're taking this show an extra hour. I know you have a meeting, Blaine, but you're just going to have to... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am loving this. Oh, yeah. Rocky Becerra says true. Mary was loving it. Oh, my goodness. I think I know. Rocky must be some uh, related to someone else I know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, oh, nice to have the live people on. So thank you, live, yes. live watchers or listeners. And, yeah, I do appreciate uh, interaction and ask him, uh, ask Blaine a question. If you have one, say hi. Let us know where you're from. We'll give you a little quick shout out on the show. I'm all about giving exposure, especially to those who deserve it. And everyone that spends their time, you're here spending your valuable time watching and listening to an amazing gentleman by the name of Blaine Elkers. And give yourself a pat on the back for doing that, for investing your time. That's one thing none of us ever get back is time. It's the most valuable commodity. It's way more valuable than money. So we both appreciate you for spending your time with us, but also commend you for for growing by listening to amazing people like Mr. Blaine Elker. So uh, keep doing what you're doing. Yes, we have a Facebook user, Nameless, that is good to see you and nice to meet you, Blaine. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Facebook user. <laughs> <laughs> I always see that one on a lot of shows, Facebook user. Oh, good. We have a question that's just coming in. I think we know the answer. Uh, you've said it up several times. Mary asks, how long have you been doing brain showers? Maybe you took a break during that four-year period or that you had have already finished? Yeah. So so I've uh, you know, I I've I did something like mind showers, you know, uh for a long time. But right now I have in headspace, I have about 1275 days in a row that I've done the mind shower. Now again, I like 10 minutes, um, but you know what? If I'm short on time, I'll do a three-minute one. And I can do a three minute one all, you know, just getting dressed or, you know, uh, it, it's very easy to work that into my day, but I've been doing that for, um, you know, for, for 1275 days in a row. And the other things for my mind, I, I also do like, um, I like fasting, like I like intermittent fasting for the physical body, but I also like that for the mind. So I will take social media fasts. I'll do um, news media fasting. So I like to do fasting for the mind as well. And, and even maybe certain foods, you know, I, I enjoy a glass of wine, but maybe I'll do, you know, uh, I'll have no alcohol for a month or two or something like that. So I, I like to, to, uh, to do the fasting, you know, uh, side of things as, as well. I have never heard of that. That is such a genius, uh, concept is is um fasting for the mind 
<laughs> that's freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, and and some people, you know, just start wherever you can, right? Like, like with the social media, sometimes people, I just say, well, just try to, like, if you're watching it all the time, just go for a few hours without it, right? Or, or maybe you could do a half a day, right? Or maybe you could do one day, you know, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Now, sometimes you have to do it for business. So right. there's times where I'm fasting, but I have to go in for a business purpose. And then, to be honest, I'm. I, I don't have enough willpower sometimes, so I set a timer. I, I tell Siri, you know, uh, I'm going in here for 10 minutes, Siri, and get me out of here. Set a timer for 10 minutes and then get me out of here. Uh, you know, so I set timers so I kind of make sure I kind of do what I need to do and 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 get out of there. Fantastic. Yes. And uh, Mary said, I really like that idea. I just really like that idea. Uh, Facebook user says the same thing. <laughs> cool idea. <laughs> I just love seeing Facebook user. And yes, Rocky. Uh, I can read this live for sure. Thank you for commenting and engaging. And yes, uh, Mary says fasting is important. It is. Um, I rarely eat any meal before 1130 to 12 o'clock noon. Uh, and, you know, it's just there, there's a lot written on the topic and it is actually very healthy. And there's a lot also concerning fasting and still exercising and should you and is it safe and all that good stuff. And the good news is it is and there, there are books written on it. So I recommend that anyone that's got any hesitation over that or resistance to that concept is pick up a book. And I, I maybe Blaine, you have one in the tip of your tongue. That's a good one to to go after. I'm, I'm trying to think of the one I, I read years yeah, ago. I, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, you could just Google it and find a lot True. of information on intermittent fasting. Now, now some people that might get a headache and, and, and medically, maybe they can't do it, but, but 90% of the population can do it and you're already doing it, right? So you go to bed and then in the morning you have breakfast, which is you're breaking the fast, break fast breakfast from the night before. And so what I tell people, like if you want to like a little weight control is, is just after dinner, don't eat, like just don't eat. So let's say you finish dinner at seven o'clock at night, don't eat and, and don't eat any, just have water only until you go to bed, then go to bed. Then the next morning, let's say you have breakfast at 7 a.m. Well, now you just did a 12 hour fast, which is pretty good because the intermittent fasters typically like to go about 16 hours yeah. and then they eat in an eight hour window. Right. Um, but but anyway, you just did 12 right there. Right. And so then you start to push breakfast back like, uh, you know, uh, Brian and I have to where we typically don't. I don't eat something either till 11 or, or, or noon. Uh, and, and for me, like that's the time my body has, you know, digestion takes a lot of work on your, you know, from your body, a lot of energy. And so that's where a lot of like healing happens. And, and you just kind of give your body a rest. Uh, you know, from all the digestion. So anyway, yeah, I, I really do do like that. And hey, mind, body, business. So good good tip for the body part of the show. Yeah, love it. Okay, so we know the mysterious user is my buddy, Tim Gillette. He has his own show as well. Very astute businessman out of Texas, I believe, somewhere out of Texas. So yeah, it's a- we All right, a welcome, Tim. Glitch, but thank you for clarifying that, Tim. Now I know who Facebook user is. Like, that is awesome. So, oh my goodness, uh, I do want to get this in before we finish the show. Uh, I'm being mindful of the time. I know you do have something right when we're done. And that's another thing is, uh, you know, folks out there, be as respectful as you can with other people's time and stay within your schedule. And I hope I don't just mess that all up by going too long tonight because I get into it. So, Blaine, feel free to remind me. You have my express permission. Hey, we're yeah, coming up on five minutes, Brian. You're kind of going long here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can have fun, too. That's good. Um, but I, what I wanted to do is I don't think anyone here even knows what it is you do as a business. <laughs> and that would be a disservice to everyone watching uh, to leave it that way. And you've done something that's very impressive, at least to me. And that is you have been on a TEDx talk. You did a TEDx talk. And uh, I just wanted to showcase what it is you do, give you the opportunity to showcase that. What is your ideal target market like what does your ideal client look like is it a man a woman a certain age a group a corporation what is it and if you don't mind uh, you know explain what you do for that individual or group and then it's a three-parter so I, I know you'll remember it all and if if you have a success story or two you'd like to share i would love for you to have the ability to do that as well so i'm going to pull up your site while you uh have that wonderful yeah. moment of glory and let everybody yeah, know what yeah. so yeah, yeah, let me just share a, a couple of uh, 
uh, of moments of dawning comprehension. So I really had two moments of dawning comprehension that set me on a path to where I am today. And so dawn, moments of dawning comprehension is where the light bulb goes off and and uh, all of a sudden things make sense, right? And so the first one happened uh, for me in college. And so in college, maybe like you, I've always been a little bit of a seeker. How can I do better? I've, you know, always into like self-improvement, self-development. And I saw this little ad for an audio cassette tape. So great, I'm dating myself. Yes, this was in the 80s. Uh, and I saw this ad for, um, it, it was an abridged version of the of the book, Think and Grow Rich, read by Earl Nightingale, who actually turned out to be another one of my mentors. Anyway, so I sent away for this audio tape and I listened to this book about Think and Grow Rich. Now it was, it talked about finances, but it was also about growing rich, you know, in, in peace of mind, in relationships, in health. Uh, and, and so when I read, so then I ended up buying the book and I read the book in college and I realized in that moment, uh, and later I created a little saying, why table? What you think about, you bring about. And so I realized in that moment that by controlling what I thought about, I could really direct my life. Now, I couldn't control the circumstances like we talked earlier. I can't control the circumstances of life, but I can control my reaction to the circumstances, right? So that determines where we end up in life, right? So my, my mentor, Jim Rohn, he would say, it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your destination. It's the set of the sail. And so no matter, you know, the winds of change, the winds of opportunity, the winds of danger, you know, all these winds are going to be blowing on us, but where you end up, it's a set of the sail and that, and that's your thinking. Um, and so, so I read that book and I had a lot of success. Uh, you know, I met my wife in college. We're still married 30 years later, uh, you, you know, and I had a lot of success and I had this concept uh, of white table, what you think about, you bring about. And so my degrees in computer science. So my Dawning comprehension moment number two uh, came when my uh, I, got, I was coming back from a business trip and I worked for this company called Rational Software Corporation, which turns out Brian and I programmed in the same language, Ada. That's yes. a cool story. That's for another time. Um, but so, so I was I was doing this. Uh, I was on a business trip with them and I come back and my son is giving me the cold shoulder. And I'm like, hey, Beth, why is Bo like giving me the cold shoulder? And she said, well, you were gone so long, he kind of forgot who you were. Ooh. And, and, and like emotionally, that like hit me hard. And then I realized, wait a second, when I was a kid, uh, my, both my parents worked and my brother a lot of times wasn't home. So I would come home to the empty house. Uh, so, so many, all these emotions come. And that night I made what I call a clarifying decision. And I said, no matter what, I'm going to work from home. No matter what, I'm going to figure out how can I work from home. Now, it took me a year. I started two businesses and our marriage. It was a difficult time for our marriage, uh, you know, during that because I was I was at the full time job and trying to kick off two businesses. But a year later, I broke free from that job. And that was 27 years ago. So for tw last 27 years, I've worked from home, owning my own business. And what it did is it gave me the time because all, all my businesses typically have no daily operations that I'm responsible for. Um, but it gave me the time to do the self-development and the discovery. And I realized what I like to do and what may, I think God's put me here to do is help people take control of their lives by taking control of themselves. Something I call personal implementation, kind of getting yourself to do the stuff you know you should be doing, but you might not be doing. Uh, and so I started I started a company called Self Fluence uh, and. I started doing this for people, and then actually I started doing it for mastermind groups. So the clients that I that I ended up serving were business owners. Um, so I have a, a bunch of mastermind groups where I'm the chief results officer, and they said they they called me that, and I go that's I like that title, chief yeah. results officer, because I like helping people get stuff done, get the dopamine going in the brain, and so I actually realized nobody else had used that term, so I went to the patent and trademark office in the United States. And I got the registered trademark, the R with the circle. It took about six months, but I got it. So now I can say I'm America's only chief results officer. And primarily what I do is help people get results, uh, help people with personal implementation, doing the things they know they need to get done. And I, I actually, most entrepreneurs, I'm sorry to say, but most entrepreneurs are a day behind in stuff. And so what I really like to do is take them from being a day behind to uh, kind of just being behind, then being caught up, then being ahead, and then being a day ahead. 
So I have this whole concept of, of what I call a day ahead entrepreneur. So when you wake up, you you know you might have appointments like do this podcast, uh, but but all your to dos are done already, and you're kind of working on stuff for tomorrow or or out in the future. Um, so that's what I love to do best. Uh, you know, I have a lot of success stories. One, I have this one guy, Phil. He's a veterinarian surgeon, and 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 he was so far behind. He literally he had two thousand emails. Uh, you know, and, and they just kept coming in and he, he could get rid of a hundred and there'd be a hundred new ones, um, you know, but putting some of these things in, in, into practice. And, and one of the things I like to do the most is I run something called a super results day. And that's where we get on zoom every three hours and everybody kind of crushes their to-do list, but it's in a group setting. So you, you tend to get a lot more done. And then we kind of mastermind a, a certain topic. Uh, but, but anyway, you know, it took him, probably uh, maybe about a year to, to, to 14 months. And and, that, and they started coming down and down. And today he's at 50. Uh, you know, so he processed all those other ones uh, and he's down to 50. And, and it, you know, maybe it's it's somewhere between 40 and 70 every day that, that he keeps it at. Um, and, and, he, and he got to that point where he's living a day ahead. He cut his work week down. He's a surgeon. He was doing surgery three days a week. Now he's down to two. Um, and, and he's much more efficient in, in the way he does it. So anyway, um, what you had put on the screen there is uh, one of the things I like to offer people is my TEDx talk. So if you go to BlaineTEDx.com, B-L-A-I-N-E-T-E-D-X.com, you can opt in and get my talk. And so a TEDx talk is a talk where you share one big idea. My talk, I think, is 14 minutes. They have to be under 18 minutes. Mine's 14 minutes. And I share kind of an elegant results technique um, which I know Brian would like because it has some neuro-linguistic programming in there. Uh, but but it, it's so that you can remind yourself of whatever you're trying to bring about or become. You can remind yourself automatically 100 plus times a day. And you know, there's no willpower. Or no, you, you don't have to do anything special. It, it, it kind of happens automatically. So anyway, that's my talk. But if you opt in, we'll be connected. You'll have my email. If I could serve you in any way, I'd be happy to to uh, to do what I can. Yeah, and I did that uh, prior to the show. I was stalking you, Blaine. No, I was just doing my research as I should as the host and loved the talk, the opening story. I'm not going to give it away. Uh, and you understand the mastery of speaking through stories and by getting to people through stories. And it makes it very compelling and very welcoming and interesting on top of everything else. And thought you did a phenomenal job that and it looked like it was several years ago that you did this and i i love the fact that you now have this and you can use this to help you know help change lives for the better and i like the whole white taba concept you know it's like what you think about you bring about and that is so true you know as the body think or as the mind thinketh and things like that that we've heard of think and grow rich it's very much down a similar path and the ted talk is wonderful so for everyone watching and listening it costs you nothing you just click that button, you opt in. He immediately, his system will send you the link to go watch that cool video. And like you said, was it 14 minutes you said? Yeah, yeah, 14 minutes. And I think we're up to 225,000 views. So it's it's been, it, it's done well as a, as a TED Talk. I'll give you, the, I also give you a transcript um, you know, as well. So, so yeah. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's impactful for people and it's, it's got a, a you know, a pretty simple technique that you can, that you can use to, to help kind of program your, your mind a little bit to help to, to work for you, not against you. And I love how you even gave props to your wife for putting together those lights on the bottom of the stage. That's, that's yes. all white, Dave. I was like, all right, I love, I love a man who lifts up their wife. I love that. Uh, yeah, and, she's, you know, uh, yeah. she's my rock. And uh, you know, I still have those lights today and uh, yeah, it was uh <laughs> It was a it was a big bucket list item for me too, so it was a little nerve wracking, obviously. But but it was it was it was great, and and um, you know, again, like you, you know, it, it's it's service to many leads to greatness, and that, and that's really you know kind of why we're all here, you know. Uh, and and what I do, I I love what I do. I I even kid around. We we have this thing in our world. We talk about the Powerball test, and and that is you know if you won the Powerball, you know would you still go do what you do? And 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 even if I won the billion dollar Powerball yesterday, I, I would still be here doing this podcast tonight because this is what I what I feel I'm I'm, I'm called to do, and and I enjoy doing it, and I, and I like to help people. And it's so obviously true. And uh, before we get beyond it, I want everyone that's listening on this podcast after the fact, and those that are watching the recording. Uh, you can see it on the screen, but I'm going to, for our listeners, uh, let them know how to get to that website. It's Blaine, B L A 
I N E Ted X T E D X dot com. So just type in Blaine Ted X dot com. And for those of you that like to put in the HTTPS in front, make sure there is no S and that way you'll get to it successfully. And definitely go there and it's 14 minutes of your time. And you can tell this is not a guy who's going to spam you to death or hit you with lots and lots of, of offers. I hope that I get an offer from him because that means he's then growing his business and that he is out there helping more people. I look for stuff like that. I want, you know, if I'm opting into something, I now have a different mindset. It's like, give me what you got. I want to see it. I don't, I'm not like, oh, you're probably going to get hit me with an offer. I'm thinking, yeah, let's see it. I want to see what you're <laughs> up to. Uh, and then before I go too far on another one, Don Hoper, it's a good friend, local um, um, chamber of commerce, genius of a man uh, and just another heart centered guy. He was talking about when we were talking about start on time and end on time, the golden rule. Yeah. And he's a golden guy. And that's why I love what I get, why I love it, uh, what I get to do is because I get to surround myself with wonderful, amazing people like you, uh, you know, like Don, like Tim and Mary, who also says her hubby lifts her up. That's fantastic. I love hearing that. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. I'm, I'm being mindful of the time, Blaine. Being mindful. I want to keep this thing rolling because that is actually a pretty astounding gift for all of you is, you know, he went through, I can't imagine what you went through to prep for that. The nerves you went through, you went through a lot to be able to give back to everyone that they could learn from you and improve based on you getting through your nerves, you getting through all the commitment, the time, wherever you went to do that. Maybe it was a long trip. I don't know. But there was a commitment of time. Your wife put together a fantastic light show for you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there was a lot put into that. And that's what I love when I see things like that. I'm digging in to look at, well, what kind of preparation did that individual do? I could tell with you it was deep and good. Not good. It yeah. was excellent. Uh, because you even added the lights to it. I'm like, wow, they let him put that on the stage. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to say, hey, babe, look at look at what they did. I want one of those. <laughs> I'll have yeah. a reach out to your wife and say, how'd you make that? <laughs> yeah, and, and if people are interested in, in being a TEDx speaker, uh, reach out to me. I definitely, uh, I have actually some notes that I put together, but they also, TEDx gives you like a little coach person. And there is a lot of work to try to make it the best it can be. But these TEDx um, you know, meetings or, or speaking opportunities happen in most major cities a couple of times a year. Uh, and, and you can, you can apply. So they have an open enrollment period where you can apply in different cities or in your own city. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, now a lot of times they do ask for an example of the video. Somebody nominated me for it, luckily for me. Um, but then I had some videos of me presenting so that that's, uh, you know, they kind of do, do look for that. Uh, but but I'm happy to help people. If, if someone's thinking about doing that, reach out to me. And I can kind of give you my notes and and show you the ropes a little bit. That's always been on my uh, target list. So I'll be the first to raise my oh, hand. Oh, let's get her done then. Oh, yes, let's get Brian on the TEDx stage. I mean, I, I just so enjoyed speaking from stage for those years with my mentor. And then I got my own uh, going for a, a few events. We had three events. And then uh, we were saddled with this this thing that closed us down for a while. But, you know, then we had this this virtual way to get things done, which I love. Yeah. There is still no substitute for being in the same room with the other individuals. You feed off of them. You know, you hear a lot of people talk about the energy. You know what? It's true. <laughs> and then, as you know, Blaine, you're standing up on a stage and you're speaking to a group of people. You can see all the way to the back and you can tell exactly what the person in the back is doing, even though they're way back there. You can tell if they're sleeping, if they're paying attention, if they're, if they're avidly uh, writing notes. It's amazing. And and just and then you get to feel and feed off of it, and especially those in the front row. You know, they're they're committed uh, that the ones that sit in the front are always after it. They're always wanting the, the most out of their experience. And you learn so much from speaking on the stage and you just get so much in return. It's just so fulfilling, especially yep. when you're doing something that has an impact in a positive way on people. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, the, you know, the experience is different, you know, when you're in the live room and and you're really focused in on it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I agree 100 percent. I'm curious. Do you know what the average audience size is for a TEDx talk live in there? I could tell there were people there. I just couldn't tell. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's a wide range, uh, you know. So at mine, I was in a, a theater, a little bit uh, like a high school amphitheater, right? Okay. So so maybe there was a hundred to hundred and fifty people. You know, there are some that are smaller, some that are 
uh, in a small venue with 20 to 30 people. Then there's some that are in venues that could be hundreds of people. Then some like big universities do one where, you know, there could be a thousand people, you know, uh, in Amazing. there. So it's a, it's a lot of different venues. And cool. um, yeah, and, and that's TEDx. And that's the one that happens all cities. Then there's right. TED. That's where, you know, it's the big stage and, yeah. and there'll be tens of thousands of people kind of watching it live. And, and uh, you kind of have to work your way in, into those. Uh, but the TEDx, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of great people have, have done those talks and then TEDx uh, and Ted, they curate them all like on their own and, and they actually, you know, help to promote it. And um, yeah, so it works out. It works out well. I've, I've yeah. gotten a lot of, you know, great kind of uh, people reaching out to me because of the TEDx talk. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm such a big uh, proponent of massive exposure and that is another phenomenal uh, component of that. You know we're here on video so that means anyone that comes on video to either as a guest or a host you have what it takes if you're thinking oh that's not gonna be something i can do yes you can <laughs> we all have far more gifts than we give ourselves credit for so for anyone that might be sitting the fence or or just flat out saying that's not for me uh think again reconsider because it can be life-changing it's done a lot of good for blaine it's done a lot of good for a lot of people i know i just had a very dear friend uh, do a TEDx in Frankfurt, Germany, because, <laughs> oh, wow. you know, her, that's where she grew up was in Germany. I don't know if it was Frankfurt, but, uh, and that was just, I think a week ago. And it's just amazing wow. and so exciting to see people yeah. I love who are making a huge impact on the world, be able to make a greater impact. That's the, yeah. yeah well, and, and I think, you know, even you, I mean, for you, you right here, you know, Brian Kelly, uh, you know, you're doing these shows and you're putting them online. Uh, and they have high value and you're interviewing, you know, a great people and you've got great knowledge and all leaders are readers and you've got a great show here, great information piece. And I will go on record as saying that you're having a big impact and that you're touching lives not yet born. So there's somebody that's not even born yet, wow. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you know, they may be watching it from Mars, but they're going to, they're going to pick up your series, your show, and it's going to help them. And it's going to help them with their mindset, with their body and, and with their business. So kudos to you. I know it's a lot of work and you got a team and you got virtual assistants and all these things are happening to put together this big show. But, but I just want to say on behalf of everybody uh, listening, you know, thank you for, for going through the effort to get this information out there. Wow, thank you. And I'd like to be the first to say hello to everyone from Mars that's watching this years in the future. Um, right, out in the future. I and love kudos it. to you for taking the risk to go up there and live because that <laughs> takes a lot right there. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's a good thing. Risk takers are what make the world go around. That's what entrepreneurship is a lot of big part about. It's calculated risk as much as you can make it. But so we're getting close to the end. Doggone it. Yep, but what I love to do. Yes. What I love to do is end every show with a very special question, Blaine. And I used to answer, uh, ask this on occasion. This is going back a couple years ago. And I just started realizing, my gosh, the answers I'm getting are pretty profound. I've got to keep this going somehow, some way. And I decided to make it the end question of every show going forward. And with your permission later, uh, I will be compiling a collaborative book or books, depending on how thick this thing ends up getting. Uh, yeah. with all of these answers because it's that profound and it can be that um, helpful to the end reader and in this case right now, listener and viewer. So right before I do that, I promised everyone that stayed on live until the end, they would get the opportunity to win a five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort. Compliments of the Big Insider Secrets. I'm going fast because Blaine needs to go. Uh, um, <laughs> the logo you see up there. Yes, thank you, Blaine. And so I'm going to pull it up on the screen right now. Get out your pen. Write this down. You do not have to enter right now. Please do not because you'll want to listen to Blaine's answer. Here it is, it's on the screen right now. You want to go to, write this down, ryp.im forward slash vacation, all lowercase, ryp.im forward slash vacation. If you're watching live right now, you have the ability to enter. You can do this five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes after the show, we'll still get it, you'll be entered, and we'll announce the winner a little bit later this evening after we collect those. So be sure to do that, and now, Back to the man, the myth, the legend himself, and the big question. Oh, 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 yes. Thank you, Mary. Wow, that's good. She's giving applause. I don't know what for. Uh, it's probably for Blaine. So, no, um, that's for you and this appearing on Mars. <laughs> that's right. Coming to you live from Earth. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So the beautiful thing about this question, there are so many beautiful things, but Blaine, one of the greatest parts to it is that there is no such thing as a wrong answer. 
it's impossible it doesn't exist the exact opposite is the true which is even more fun the only correct answer is yours and the reason is because it's unique to you and so if it takes you a microsecond to come up with the answer or if it takes you 10 15 30 seconds to come up with the answer that is still nothing wrong with that it is absolutely perfect because it is your answer there's nothing you can do wrong about it so does that sound cool that sounds great all right so with that, are you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Blaine Elkers, how do you define success? Okay, how do I define success? I I like a, defi a combination of definitions that I got from Earl Nightingale and Jim Rohn. And basically, um, Earl Nightingale said success was the progressive realization of a worthy ideal and Jim Rohn uh, said that success was you moving towards your personal goal. So, so what I, I believe success is personal, right? So if someone says, hey, I want to be a great school teacher, if they're moving towards that, becoming a great school teacher, they're successful, right? So I think it's it's up to you what you define as where you want to go. I call that your point B, going from point A to point B, but, but where you want to go. Uh, and if you're moving towards that, then your success. That would be my my definition of success is, is moving towards your, your personal goals. And you know how we have to end this, don't you? It's coming. There it is. Yes. Another bomb. Knowledge bombs. Bombs of wisdom. That is the definition of one Mr. Blaine Elkers. And I want to tell you personally and with feeling, I appreciate you for spending your valuable time here with me tonight and with everyone else who's been watching and listening. Those who listen on podcast later and those of you watching or listening from Mars. Every one of you is going to be uh, phenomenally impacted. I hope you took notes and I hope you take action. Any last, I know you're you're really stressed on time, Blaine. Any parting words of advice before we call yes. it a night? Yes, I'm going to leave you with this. The bad news. The bad news is that time flies. The good news, you're the pilot. So pilot well, my friends. Pilot oh. well. I love it. So we must call an end to this show. Unfortunately, I know we should go on for another two hours. Maybe we'll call Blaine back later. Yes, but I'd love to be back. Hey. Out of respect for this gentleman and everyone else who came on the show that knows us an hour in length. We're going to call it a show. On behalf of the amazing Blaine Elkers, I am your host, Brian Kelly, of the Mind Body Business Show. Until next time, keep crushing it, keep serving, and above all, everyone, please be blessed. Take care for now. So long. Thank you for tuning in to the Mind Body Business Show podcast at www.themindbodybusinessshow.com. My name is Brian 